everyone, welcome to Math Talk. I'm your host, Brian Heisler, and today we're going to start a little mini series on expressions, equations, and inequalities. So let's get started. So I have a question right here that says, which value for x makes the inequality of x is greater than 500 true? And they give you four different options to choose from. Um, so this is something that you know may or may not be on the non-calculator section, but um, with the calculator it is obviously a lot easier. Um, you just basically need to figure out which of these values, a, b, c, or d, is bigger than 500, and that's your answer. So with exponents, the rule is you take the number and you multiply it by itself, however many exponent numbers there are. So for a, we have 4 times 4 times 4 times 4, which is going to be 256. So that's less than 500, so that's out. 3 to the 6th is a lot of 3s. Uh, let's see, that's six of them right there. And if you multiply that out, you're actually going to get um, 729, which right there is bigger than 500, so that means it has to be your answer. So you can just go ahead and stop right there because you know that your answer should be B. If you were to try option C and option D, 7 to the third is actually 343, 7 times 7 times 7, and 6 to the third is 216. 6 times 6 times 6. And both of those are less than 500, so it's still going to be B. All right? So that's a simple example. Let's go to another one. Which of the following expressions is equal to 6 minus 4 times the quantity of x plus 3? So it's another expression problem. Basically, they want you to simplify what you're given by using the distributive property and rules of operations. So let's go ahead and do that. <clears throat> So we have 6 minus 4 times x plus 3. Distributed property says we take the number outside the parentheses and multiply it by the two numbers on the inside. Make sure you keep that minus sign in front of the 4 because really it's like a negative 4 and we want to distribute the sign as well. So we have 6 minus 4 times x is 4x and then minus 4 times 3 which is 12. Okay. Now, 4x is the only term with an x in it, so we're going to leave it by itself, keeping the sign in front. And we have basically 6 minus 12. Well, 6 minus 12 is going to be minus 6, so we need the expression a, b, c, or d, which is negative 4x minus 6, which happens to be right here. So just apply rules of distributive property and operations to simplify what you're given and choose the best answer. All right, let's look at one more example. This time we have an equation. We're asked, what is the equation of a line that has a slope of negative 4 and passes through the point 1, 2? So if you see your options, they're all in uh, slope-intercept form, which is nice because it allows us to figure out things a little bit easier. Um, and we need to figure out basically what the y-intercept is, or that b-value. So slope-intercept is y equals mx plus b, where m is your slope. So the nice thing about this problem here is that they tell us what the slope is. They tell us slope is negative 4, and so we can actually already eliminate two of our answer choices because the slope is not negative 4. This can't be it, this can't be it, because the slope in that equation is positive 4. So already we've cut our answer choices in half, it makes it easier for us to find a solution. Now, we're also given a point 1, 2, and any coordinate point is in the, the format of x comma y, so all I need to do is plug in the x and y values, so 2 is y, negative 4 times 1 is x, and plus b. Now I just need to figure out what b is, and I can find my final answer to my equation. So 2 equals negative 4 plus b. I just need to do one more step real quick. I need to add 4 to both sides. And then I get 6 equals b. Now I have all the pieces of my equation. I can put it all together to figure out that y equals negative 4x plus 6, I need to find the answer to that, which is in this case, option F. So 
I hope this helps as you go through some expressions and inequalities and equations. You know, be sure to check out the other videos I have coming up. There's going to be two more. Um, and when you get to these types of problems, always remember to simplify your equations. And I hope this helps. Thanks for watching. If you have any other questions or you need assistance and you live in the Palm Beach County area, visit our website at GEDS.com to find a location near you and sign up for classes.